Yeah, we back. Yeah, we back. Now, today, man, we're going to be talking about Alan Onyema, the CEO of Air Peace, right? I bet y'all didn't know this black man out here owning airlines and things like that. Yeah, we're going to talk about CEO Alan Onyema. Now, unfortunately for the good brother, he's currently fighting a case against the U.S. government. And I recently seen a statement that was put out by the U.S. Attorney's Office in uh, northern Georgia. It said this. Alan Onyema, the chairman and CEO and the founder of Air Peace, an Nigerian airline, has been charged in a superseding indictment with obstruction of justice. Now, I seen the good brother search for Uhuru talking about this the other day. I'm going to run out footage. I'll be right back. Let's go. Now, if you want to put the tinfoil hat on with the Air Peace CEO, uh, Alan Onyema, if you want to do the conspiracy theory with him, it will make more sense with him because of what uh, he's accomplishing with Airpiece, black-owned airline, black-owned private airline with international routes. And he was set at the end of this year to have a direct route from, I think, Newark, New Jersey to uh, Lagos and also from Houston. We already know he had the route from Lagos to, to the UK, which at first were cheap, but now are expensive as hell. So if you guys want to say the conspiracy theory is they trying to take a brother down because, you know, a brother got airplanes and he's expanding. You know, a brother got airplanes and he's expanding. You know, so the man got to take him down. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to put the tinfoil kufi on. Now, let's get into it, man. First things first, before we dive into the court case, I just want to say shout out to this brother, man. You know, shout out to this brother, man. Black man having planes in the sky. <laughs> God damn, man. The black man got planes in the sky. Now, what stuck out to me when I heard about Alvin Onyema was the fact that this was a privately owned airline, right? The big name airlines you see flying around the sky all the goddamn time. A lot of these airlines are government owned. They're owned by the state or they're publicly owned companies. But this is the black man's joint right here. You know, this, this is the black man's company. So shout out to Alvin Onyema. Obviously a very intelligent brother. I dive into his background. He was a lawyer, but besides that, he was involved in all type of different businesses and ventures import export really built himself up from the ground up you know to go from being a young boy from humble beginnings to you grow up to be a man and you got fleets of planes flying around the world say what you want that story is crazy and correct me if i'm wrong but i believe he might have the largest privately owned airline on the continent i believe the only other airlines bigger than him are the ones owned by the government like the government of south africa the government of egypt the government of ethiopia but this right here like i said is a privately owned venture and i believe the company is only like what like 10 years old and as you can see he's been rapidly expanding he got boeing 737s in the sky he's flying international flights you know to the middle east to europe he's doing his thing right he's been doing his thing but in today's video we're gonna dive into his court case and we're going to see what lessons we can take from it as black men, especially, you know, if you're a young black man listening, you want to you want to get involved in high level business in the future. What are some lessons we can take so we don't make the same mistakes and we don't get caught up in the same traps? So let's get into it. Let's jump straight into the article. Alan Onyema, the CEO and founder of Nigeria's Air Peace Airline, has been charged with obstruction of justice in the United States, adding to previous charges of bank fraud and money laundering. A press release from the U.S. Attorney's Office for Northern Georgia says that Onyema was charged with submitting false documents to the government in an effort to end an investigation on him that led to those earlier charges, which were brought in 2019. Now, I'm about to butcher the homie name right here. Uh, Ejogen Egaba, my, my fault, bro. Airpiece's chief of administration and finance was also charged with obstruction. The pair were indicted in 2019 over allegations that they had moved more than $20 million from Nigeria through U.S. bank accounts by using false documents based on the purchase of five Boeing 737s. Now, time out. Now, in this video, I'm not really here to really say whether he's innocent or guilty. I'm simply using his case as a case study for what lessons black men can learn from this if we are doing business to see what traps we should avoid so we don't get caught up in the same type of mess. Now, in this part of the article, they said that he was trying to transfer large sums of money to the United States so he could make a purchase on some Boeing 737s. Now, say what you want. That's some fly shit right there. You know, imagine waking up one morning and saying that, I'm about to go buy five Boeing 737s. Bro, that, that, that's some fly shit, bro. That's some fly shit. Now, here's the thing. If you get caught up at a, at a damn traffic stop with like $20,000 in the car, they're going to take your money. They're going to seize your assets. So imagine what they're going to do if you're transferring massive sums of money, you know, 10, 15, 20 million dollars all in one transaction. The government is going to examine your financial records. They're going to examine every little detail under a microscope. 
So let's say one scenario could have been that he was actually trying to actually get those planes, right? But hey, you know, it might have been an error in a document, might have had a typo in a document, you know, he might have uh, dated something, you know, for this day, but it should have been on that date. Any little thing could set off an alarm, bro. Any little thing could be deemed as an irregularity that should be examined and investigated. So there's one scenario that could be that he was not really operating with malicious intent. It could have been an honest mistake, man, in the paperwork. It could have been an honest mistake, right? Another scenario could be like Dinus had said at the beginning of the video. Hey, they might be hating on the black man. They might be hating on the black man. Because as you can see, this company is relatively new, right? Just started like 10 years ago, already crushing the continent, going to the Middle East, going to Europe, now trying to expand it to the American markets, right? So, and you already know this aviation industry, it's like a good old boys club. So they might not want the black man coming in, crushing the game, privately owned company, coming in, flooding the market. He's already shown that he has proof of concept because he's already crushing it at home. He's already crushing the game back home on the continent. So he's already shown that he has a concept that works. So we have to keep in mind that there might be a second scenario where they might simply be trying to slow down his expansion. They might be trying to slow down his, uh, you know, meteoric rise. Now, let's continue. The indictment seen by Business Insider says they submitted export letters of credit to fund the purchases along with supporting purchase agreements, bills of sale and appraisals. But prosecutors argue that these documents were fake and that the company supposedly selling the planes, the Georgia registered firm Springfield Aviation, was owned by Onyema and managed by someone with no connection to the aviation industry. The aircraft that was referenced in each of the export letters of credit was never owned or sold by Springfield Aviation, the indictment says. Once the money was in the United States, the prosecutors say, Onyema laundered over $16 million by moving it to other accounts. Now, like I said, I'm gonna give the brother the benefit of the doubt that maybe maybe there was a mistake in that paperwork, right? Maybe, because obviously the laws are different in Nigeria, the United States, maybe he might not be familiar with how things work over here. So maybe he might've submitted some paperwork that might've triggered an audit, right? Things like this happen in whatever industry you're involved in, especially once you're dealing with large sums of money like that. Now, obviously the man has been able to accumulate a fleet of over 30 planes, 30 aircraft, so he's not new to the game. Now, as it relates to the charge of him actually owning the company that was selling the planes, hey, his legal team will have to deal with that one. I'm not really knowledgeable in this area to really understand what's going on over there. Now, as it relates to him moving money around to different accounts, I mean, I mean, in business, that that's I mean, that's common in business. You're going to move money around to different accounts to meet your operational needs. I mean, it's not like he got dirty money. It's not like he's selling drugs. You obviously know where the money came from. The money came from selling plane tickets. And where was he moving the money to? I don't know. Maybe he wanted to move the money to invest, to expand, to penetrate the American market. I don't know, right? I'm just throwing things into the atmosphere. You got to have money on hand to invest. I don't know. But anyway, let's continue. In 2019, investigators then say Onyema, aware that he was under investigation, told the Springfield Aviation Manager to sign but not date a business contract. His attorneys are later said to have presented this document, which was now dated before the alleged fraud began, to the government in an effort to stop the investigation and unfreeze his bank accounts. Now, like I said, it seems to me that it's three scenarios here. One scenario could be that he just made an honest mistake, right? It might have been an error in the paperwork. He might have made a mistake in the paperwork. A second scenario is they could be hating on the black man, right? They see the black man that started the company 10 years ago. Now he's flying all over the goddamn world. Now he's trying to come into the American market. He's trying to get a flight straight from Texas to, to Lagos. You know what I mean? So the good old boys club in the aviation industry, they could be like, hold up, bro. Stay over there in Africa, right? Stay over there in the Middle East. Stay over there in Europe. Don't think about coming to New York. Don't think about coming to Texas. Don't think about coming to Atlanta. Stay over there, bro. You know, stay in your lane, bro. Now, the elephant in the room is this. He wanted to buy five Boeing 737s, but the company, the prosecutor said that the company that was selling the Boeing 737s was a company owned by him, so he was trying to buy this Boeing 737s from himself. Now, that's, that's gonna be the elephant in the room. Unless he can prove to the courts that he has some vertically integrated operation where he owns a means of production from top to bottom, so it makes sense somewhat. That's still kind of looking. It's still kind of looking shaky on the surface. On the surface, it looks kind of funny, but it could be, you know, unless he can show that I'm vertically integrated. I own my own operation from top to bottom at different levels. I own all the means of production. Unless he can prove that, I don't know. It's looking funny. But I'm still I'm still going to give him the benefit of the doubt, though. Now, in the scenario that the government could simply be trying to be hating on a black man, we already know, man, the aviation industry is one of those industries. Like I said, it's a good old boys club. It's controlled by a few powerful players. A few powerful companies own the entire goddamn thing. They control the entire they, they control the trap. Right. So if you're coming in as an outsider trying to trap on a block, trying to hustle on a block. They don't like that, right? This is they block, they hustle on this block. They don't want to see no new faces. So when you're coming in, you know, a brand new company, 10 years old, 
You know, you flying to London, you flying to Dubai. Now you're trying to get into the United States, trying to come in on their routes. And you're a black man and it's probably owned. Man, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here, man. You know the white boy is going to be hating. So obviously, you're going to be cutting into their monopoly on the industry. And you already know the airline companies, they known to lobby the government. So it's not far fetched to assume that they can lobby the government and be like, hey, take a closer look at his financial records. You know, look through his financial records a little bit closer. Find any little mistake, any little irregularity. And as we know throughout history, the white man is known to fight against each other, to fight amongst each other. But once the black man comes in the room, they unite together against the black man. So it could be multiple airline companies collaborating, working together, sharing intelligence to try to push him out the market, try to keep him out the market. That could be a, that could be happening too. lobbying the government as a unit to make sure he doesn't become a viable competitor. But one thing we can take from this, one lesson we can take from this as black men is understand that this system is not going to give you the benefit of the doubt, man. So make sure you have your paperwork in order, your finances in order, your business dealings are above board. Everything is is 100 percent clean, squeaky clean. We don't have the liberty and the luxury to be making any mistakes, to be slipping up on any on any type of paperwork, any type of documents, any little thing. Unfortunately, we live in a world where the black man cannot, you know, bend the rules in the same way that our enemies have bended the rules throughout history. Right. When you examine men who are seen as the captains of industry, right, the old money, you know, the barons of industry, men who are celebrated as visionaries and business leaders. When you examine a lot of the old money families, where did they get their money from initially? Right. From the tobacco plantation, the sugarcane plantation, the cotton plantation. Right. And then they took their money and reinvested it into other industries. Right. The banking industry manufacturing the railroads etc etc all these men they praise as business geniuses you know rockefeller and carnegie and vanderbilt and all these guys all engaged in all type of unethical practices but they look at them as oh man those the those the fathers of business their names are on libraries and universities and all this bullshit but let the black man make one mistake let the black man make a typo on a document right make one mistake on a financial document straight to federal prison and sometimes it really be like that. Sometimes it really just be a mistake on a document or a typo on a document. Like even in, even myself, right? Like my family's in the pharmaceutical industry. It could be something as small as the insurance companies could audit you and ask you about a prescription from like last year. And if the documents you submit aren't exactly to the letter, like the exact amount on the copay, the same exact date and time that it was that it was dispensed and things like that, if it doesn't align 100% then they're going to audit you. They're going to penalize you. So it could be something as small as that that could get you, you know, investigated and looked at. So you got to have your documents or whatever business you involved in, brothers, man. Have your documents in order. Have your paperwork in order. Understand the laws and the, and the jurisdiction of wherever you are doing business. Don't get caught up, bro. Study your legal, study your legal jargon. Make sure your paperwork is in order. Make sure, you know, everything is above board. And if you move in large sums of money, make sure, like I said, Make sure everything is documented and you got a paper trail. Now, I just want to say, because I don't think y'all understand how crazy it is to be, you know, to have like a fleet of planes in the sky, have your own probably own airline, like getting into the aviation business. I think that's one of the toughest um, industries to break into, bro. First of all, you got to have the money. And like I mentioned before, most airlines are owned by their government. Those are government owned operations. So to be a probably owned citizen talking about, yeah, I got my own probably owned airline Boeing 737s on deck. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. And one thing I respect about this brother is the fact that whenever, like, take a look up on the screen. Like last year when the conflict broke out of Sudan, Alan Onyema offered to evacuate Nigerians who were stranded in the Sudan. And also, I believe a few years back, when the temperature was kind of hot in South Africa, he actually evacuated Nigerians from South Africa back home. So, and free of charge. Like he didn't charge them or nothing, right? He sent the plane free of charge. So, you know, when I seen that story, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a real black man right there. Our people were being dehumanized over there. And I thought to restore the dignity of this nation, something must happen. So I decided to move in there to evacuate our citizens, to restore the pride of this country. And we've been able to show the world that nobody can break the resolve of Nigerians. Nobody can break the resolve of Nigerians to live together as one nation. In summary, man, shout out to the good brother. You know, shout out to him. Definitely one of our more, you know, highly intelligent, highly industrious and highly accomplished uh, good brothers doing this thing and, you know, rising at a very meteoric pace. And the enemy is definitely watching and the enemy is definitely mad. And my position is this. A lot of them so-called guys in the good old boys club in the aviation industry and really whatever industry you want to talk about, whether it's the banking industry or whatever. Um, a lot of you guys, the foundation of your money, the original seed capital of your money that your family got came from. Uh, nefarious means a lot of you guys didn't really get your money in an ethical manner 
Um, so you really have no room to talk, right? A lot of you guys probably got your money from back on the sugar cane plantation, the cotton plantation, and things like that, right? Doing all, all type of unethical practices from back in the day. A lot of you guys who come from old money. So to be honest, you have no room to talk, if you want to be real. And I'll give my brother the benefit of the doubt that it might have just been an honest mistake, right? It might have just been an honest mistake. Maybe it might have been a typo on the paperwork. I don't know. But let's say that he was trying to move some money around and things like that. Listen, like I said, all these old money families, all these guys who at the top of these industries, if we examine your history and go through your family's financial documents and see how you guys made your money from back in the day, I think we could come up with some skeletons in your closet as well. So stop hating on the black man. Let the black man expand his business operations. Let the black man start getting new routes to New York, to Atlanta, to, to Texas, to Los Angeles. Let the black man do his thing, man. Let the black man do his thing. You know, I know, I know, I know when a black man come around, y'all get so jealous and so envious. Oh my God, I don't have a private airline. I don't have a private airline company. How come the black man got a private airline company? You know, listen, yeah, we're not, we're not government owned. We're not public. We're not publicly traded. It's privately owned, baby. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Alan Oyama. Anyway, man, it's your boy Nefakar Celine back in the Billy Yes Indeed cash app in the description. Support the channel, man. Support the album. Peace. No. Feel like I'm 75. None of your team be full of them traders. You know that can never be mine. Grabbing a thought when I drive I'm back in my zone and we young She said that she ready to come be my wife Yeah, hoping I don't do her wrong I gave her my word and it's wrong I'm whipping the best like a lamb I mean no chicken and lamb Accustomed to call me the man I never be up on the grand I'm keeping that way undercover She want me to tell her I love her I told her I'm breaking the rules I told her we making the news Back in my city, they loving me Standing alone, I'm a hundred deep Enemy plot is still in reach They trying to make sure that we underneath Trying to make sure that we never make it Coming for power, come get acquainted Coming for everything that I wanted Feeling like Drake, but I really wrote it Feeling like Kendrick, I'm checking names Gotta roll up while I go insane Got so much stress, I've been gated away Stuffing these racks in this Louis case One thing for certain, I'm about to check Keeping 100 and nothing less Stick with the family since day one Had to stay down in my day come Had to stay down, but I'm never patient Hop on the mic and I'm motivated Hop on the mic and I drive a classic Haters can't see me, they copping glasses Back in the studio, making magic Got a new tape and it's in production Back on my business, I got a budget Staying low-key when I'm out in public Feel like I'm 75 None of your team be full of them traders You know that can never be mine I'm grabbing a thought when I drive I'm back in my zone and we young She said that she ready to come be my wife Yeah, hoping I don't do her wrong I gave her my word and it's born I'm webbing the best like a lamb I mean no chicken and lamb Accustomed to call me the man I never be up on the grand I'm keeping that way undercover She want me to tell her I love her I told her I'm breaking the rules I told her we making the news